Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to another Pick a Card reading. Today we are tuning into Uranus to see what kind of messages he has for us. I'm leaving this totally open. I don't know what Uranus wants to talk to us about. And I actually had something I wanted to say about Uranus and I have completely <laughs> just like that forgotten what it was. Let me think. Oh, so I am going to be referring to Uranus as a he throughout the reading because I guess that is the closest approximation I can get. I don't really feel that Uranus is masculine or feminine. I get a very androgynous vibe off of him, but it feels weird to call him an it and I'm just going to go with him. But just so in case anybody's wondering, I'm, I kind of get a very gender neutral thing from Uranus. And if you're wondering what that squeak was, that is my dog playing with his squeaky toy behind me. <laughs> Just a moment. Also, this reading is absolutely timeless. It is for you no matter when you're watching it, but I feel that Uranus is coming up in my consciousness because he just went retrograde. And anybody watching this in 2020, will Uranus retrograde is going all the way from you know August 15th 2020 until January like or I can't remember exactly it's like early January in 2021 so if you're watching this kind of around when I post it know that Uranus is in retrograde and that is definitely some kind of influence here but if you're watching this later uh don't worry about that it doesn't have to sync with that this message is still for you so go ahead and pick your cards. It's just pile one, two, three, and number four, and I'll see you in your reading. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. I think for you guys, the Uranus retrograde for anybody watching this in 2020 is literally designed to send you on a inward journey. You might be feeling like you're taking many steps back, you know, that kind of one step forward, two steps back feeling, or maybe you just even feel like you're taking a thousand steps back or that you're doing things backwards. I know the very first day that Uranus went retrograde, I, my whole day literally went in reverse. Things I would normally do in one order suddenly just felt natural to do it in reverse order. And my conscious mind was like, hey, this is weird. Stop it. Do it in the proper order. And, you know, the rest of me was like, hey, wait, this is kind of cool explore this. What is it like to do things in reverse? Because after all, this linear way of doing things, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's just a, a construct, right? So Uranus going retrograde is really here to mix things up and to make us question why we do things the way we do and why the order is important. It's like bringing the whole linear experience up for review. And that's what's starting with you guys, this inward revolution inward revolution. You might feel like you're getting pulled away from the world or that, you, that you've that you gone so far inside your head that the world feels light years away. You know, you, on a human level, we feel like our skulls are, are, are rather small, right? But I know, I know what that's like to feel like you're so far inside of your own head that it feels like you're so far away from reality that you'll just never find your way back. And don't worry, you will find your way back. You're just being kind of sent on this journey to the center of yourself to rediscover yourself and to really learn who you are and what is it that you want and to light, to light your own lamp, to light your own lamp. You know, Nine of Swords, the Hermit, that is this journey. The <laughs> Inward Revolution and the Hermit to get those two cards together is just a double confirmation because it's all talking about the same thing, moving so far inwards to um, learn about your own light and to learn that you only need yourself and that you can totally pare away all of these external hassles. Um, but oddly enough, this is going to result in you being um, reunited, not only with the external world, but with your soul family, three of cups, and getting so much more grounded, grounded again in your body and with the earth, root chakra ground and breathe, ground and center. Sorry, that's what it says here. Um, so, <laughs> you know, nine of swords right now, you're feeling 
almost a little bit like all these swords are flying at you, you know? <laughs> it, um, and I got that not just from looking at the card, but I just looked away, uh, you know, off the side here for a second, and I, I felt like I had a vi really visceral feeling of swords flying at me. And I don't think you're really being threatened by anything externally. It is almost like you're afraid to face yourself or... You know, even if you're very introverted and very into personal development and very into shadow work and all of that, you might be thinking, nah, you know, I'm so good at like facing myself. I do that all day. It's like my hobby, right? There's still something, something that wants to come up that you need to be facing. And that's why you're going on this inward journey, this inward revolution, this hermit's journey to kind of face that one final problem. And with Uranus being such a radical, iconoclastic energy, this could be something like way deep embedded in your soul that like some kind of cycle you've been working through through a very long time and it just took until 2020 <laughs> or, you know, whatever future year when you're watching this to finally become relevant for you to finally face it. So this could be an issue that is so deep you didn't even know you had it, you know, for me, something that, it's, you know, it's probably to do with your past lives. For me, something similar, just an ex as an example, was finding out that um, in a whole sequence, a whole series of my past lives, I had been enslaved and tortured in various, and tortured to death, you know, executed, killed. <laughs> a whole series of lives, one after the other, of just slavery. And even in a life that, would, that was going well, uh, I would be miserable, and then I would get tortured to death, and just over and over and over again. And, you know, as you can tell, I'm, I feel pretty lighthearted about that now because now it's all I've, you know, just recently resolved that and dealt with it and faced it and, you know, had those memories come up so that I can face them and work through them. And then now I can see the context. I can see why I chose those lives, why I chose to be tortured to death repeatedly, right? You might think no one would ever choose to be tortured to death repeatedly. That's proof right there, you know, that they're, um, that reincarnation and people's past life memories are, are bullshit, right? But no, because now I understand why, why I chose that. It really, once you get to the other side of it, it really can make sense. Um, for me, it's because now it is breaking free of that, stepping into my ul ultimate sovereignty, knowing that I... While being tortured, I could feel unconditional love for my torturer and then having that be broken and then having to go through these broken lives where I was separated from unconditional love and then coming into this life where I kind of lived all those lives in microcosm and then being able to be freed from all of that and come back into unconditional love. It's like, it's so good. It's like going all day walking in the desert without water. Um, and then finally getting a cold, cold glass of ice water. And it's so good. It's almost as though going all day without it. And that whole journey through the wilderness or through the desert was worth it just for how good that glass of ice water was. That's what you're kind of working on. You know, it's not necessarily going to be slavery and torture past lives for you guys, but it can definitely be something and something fairly dark um, that you're going to be discovering. And you don't need to dig into this too much. I think this is going to come to light pretty naturally, but do pay attention to things that you're uh, thinking, like things you're imagining. You might suddenly imagine a scene and you're like, oh, I could write a novel about that. I could write a story or, hey, that's a cool idea. I like that character. So, you know, just you're kind of imagining stories. Uh, be very careful when those come up because that is more than likely a past life. I'm sorry, guys. You can hear my dog. He is a very... Uh, here to encourage you guys. He is <laughs> growling and yipping behind me and trying to climb up into my lap. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. I'm sorry. It is like 41 degrees here and very humid. Uh, 41 degrees Celsius. That is what, like 104 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. So it's pretty damn hot. I haven't been able to take my dog for a walk in several days and he's starting to lose it. Um, but I do think <laughs> he picks up on my energy when I get really enthusiastic about something that means I'm, um, you know, the channel is open and it's really coming through and he is over there freaking out because he says how animated I am and it's just a little bit of external confirmation of, you know, everybody's kind of feeling this energy right now. I like it. So where was I? Once you're going through this hermit journey, see, let me show you this card.
you're in this cave, you had to go through this cave, it's dark, you know, a little gloomy, a little creepy, no one really likes going through a cave, but you're going to be going through this portal and look, the sun is shining on the other side. So you're going on this inward revolution so that you can, you know, go through the darkness and come to the light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, don't lose hope or don't despair too much on this journey. Just remember that it is this is here to serve you and you did choose it because you're heading towards the Three of Cups. You know, beautiful reunion with your soul family. This is just, look how watery this is. This is just love, connection with the cosmos, connection with your, your spirit guides, and just love flowing freely. Now I know why I was drawn to talk about experiences of coming back into unconditional love because three cups is truly unconditional love but more because it's not i mean it can this can signify romantic love for some of you but it is more of just universal unconditional love rather than you know love between two specific people so it is just living in an empath's wonderland if you you know you're obviously if you're watching this you know people who aren't empathic don't care about tarot readings on youtube so you're an empath and it's been tough living in our reality because it is not a very forgiving place for empaths so you're going to be coming into your local environment it is going to be finely tuned it'll it will be tuned for your pleasure, for your benefit. It will be a comfortable place for you as an empath to live. Be And this is going to be partly because the healing to your root chakra. This is part of this in revolution is you're going to be feeling a lot more comfortable in your body and in your place in the world and even just your place as a human on earth. This is having healed whatever damage had been done to your root chakra in past lives really really common <laughs> you know you've gone through some difficult lives challenging lives that made you eject yourself partially out of your body you know i mean you guys know what i mean right whenever you've had anything really 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 horrible happening to you or just super stressful and you you just disassociate from your body because you're like i can't handle this anymore like i'm out like i'm checking out <laughs> so you know you remove yourself slightly from your body and that damages your root chakra. So this is <laughs> this whole inward revolution of yours, this inward journey of facing this fear, this like past life trauma, whatever it is, and learning to be your own lamplighter for your own soul is going to be healing your root chakra. And with your root chakra healed, you know, you're going to feel so good here in your life on earth. It's just, it's going to be the land of milk and honey. And, and it's going to be cool because you're going to go inwards in order to reach this outer destination. So I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pal two, welcome to your reading. You guys are <laughs> going on a soul journey. And there's a lot of air energy um, kind of bookending this soul journey. I mean, obviously, this is all clouds. <laughs> right? This is the heavens opening up. This is you activating your higher, like your transpersonal chakras, actually. If you can ever feel, almost feel like there's like a tickling above your head, that is all this going on. This is everything lightening up and opening you up to more cosmic information. And this is ending with 13 air paradigm shift. And this shift for you guys, I think is going to begin with this idea, begin with this cosmic inspiration. For some of you, you might have a dream or you might have some kind of experience where, you know, the universe goes, bam, you know, it could be falling down the stairs, some kind of um, incident, right? Um, you know, I don't want to freak anybody out. You know, I don't want you worrying about getting in a car accident or anything. But, you know, those moments in life where you kind of hit the wall, metaphorically speaking, sometimes literally, you know, <laughs> Um, something happens and it makes you think it, maybe it's like you were crossing the road and a car almost hit you and you're like, holy shit, you know, I could have died. I could have been hit by a car, something like that. Um, you know, or maybe it is just, just an idea, you know, the more tuned in you are, the more open you are to receiving messages, the less obvious this is going to be for those of you who are really into communicating with your guides or just meditating and receiving uh, inspiration that way, it'll work like that for you. But if you're more kind of 
uh, new to your spiritual path, um, something might trigger this. And it's just going to be to get you to think in a new way. And you're going to have to be looking at how you live your life, basically. It's these, these three tarot cards, the Emperor, the Four of Wands, which is about all about the home and your your family life and your like house, your stability, and moving into the Queen of Cups. So this is to this is totally the journey of somebody um, who has to quit their career, has to give up their career to take care of their family, or has to give up a career in order to be with their uh, the love of their life, to be with their partner. Um, some kind of conflict between your masculine energies basically and your feminine energies and this these cards here are calling you to get in touch with your feminine side essentially you know emperor look at this lion this is you i feel like this is where you've been at this is probably where you're comfortable being very sovereign very independent very uh dominating i don't really feel like you know in that horrible bossy way that everybody hates this is just you're so independent and strong in and of yourself you don't need anybody else you know you got this and you also don't want anybody infringing on your freedom you know it's very important to you um but you're starting to feel your priorities shift or maybe feel like the universe is trying to shift them for you you know looking at this four of wands this is drawing your attention to your to your home life you know are you happy where you're at is your behavior cause, causing you problems at home? Are you being too domineering, um, too authoritative with your children? In, or being too authoritarian, really, more than just authoritative. Authoritative isn't bad when it comes to parenting, but authoritarian is, you know, being just that kind of military-style parent, if it's something like that. Or that could be even with your employees or just with your friends or even with yourself. And see how that is impacting your life. Is it, is it making you... Is it starting to make you feel sick? Are you feeling like you're being too strict, being too independent, being too uh, set to your own schedule? Just all of that like stereotypical masculine boss kind of energy, all that emperor energy, uh, I feel like is having some kind of an impact on your home life. And you're not, you're probably not quite willing to let that go yet because it's such an important part of you. And you know, you don't want to, you obviously don't want to give up your freedom. You don't want to give up who you are and you certainly don't want to give it up for anybody else. And I agree with all of that, right? <laughs> but at some point you start to notice, it's like when you're eating a lot of junk food and you feel like, wow, why did I, why am I still eating this bag of chips? It's making me feel sick. You know, so as soon as you get to that point of going, wow, my, my paradigm, it's not even about your behavior because it's not necessarily, not necessarily anything wrong with your behavior. It's this paradigm that you've been in maybe serves you for many lifetimes but now you're starting to think ha huh, maybe it's time to try something else and that's that idea that's coming in can i change my approach can i do this a different way can i live this a different different way and that's when you're being invited to come into the queen of cups this is you getting so in tune with your emotional body you know um for some of you there might be some purging of all involved where you know you're not used to crying at movies you're not used to getting upset about this or that, but suddenly you're just so emotionally triggered and you just want to cry, you know, and if that happens to you, you know, just, just let it all out. I, I know how cringy that is, but you know, this is going to be part of your process. You're not going to be this like weepy, mushy mess forever, but when you're doing a paradigm shift and you're swinging from one side to the other, there's like a moment where you go too far into the extreme of the other side and that's fine. You know, and you're also, look at this, she's, she's not looking up at the stars, this woman uh, who's actually, there's two of her, right? This is her two halves, two halves of herself, looking down at the stars in a puddle. Very interesting, very deep and introspective. Reminds me at my university, we had a pond out in the middle of campus called the Reflecting Pond, and you were supposed to sit there and, you know, philosophize <laughs> and, you know, watch eagles catch the koi fish. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so basically... You're moving from the Emperor energy into this Queen of Cups energy. And to you, it might feel like a stepping down. It might feel like a demotion or like you are compromising yourself. And guys, I know exactly how this feels. This exact spread could have been for me like a year and a half ago. Uh, you know, I had to completely learn to get reacquainted with my emotions, reacquainted with my sensitivity my sentimentality my intuition just all of those feminine things 
Um, I had to learn to come back to them. But, and, and I really felt like I was betraying myself, like I was giving up an aspect of myself because I didn't want to let go of, you know, the me that was so logical, so rational, so, you know, me, myself, and I, so independent. But, you know, I started to realize that part of that, that wasn't really the whole me. That was a part of me, but it was also part of me that had been really overcompensating because I didn't want to get hurt, you know. <laughs> I had been hurt so many times for so many different things, you know, through this life and other lives and yada, 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 you know, that I had constructed by this persona of being the emperor. And I had thought that was all of me. It's an important part of you, but it's not all of you, right? So you might have to let that aspect of yourself take a back seat for a little bit as you come into the Queen of Cups, as you come into your feminine energy. And, you know, yeah, I think the, the main thing here is you might feel like like the emperor, like the emperor version of yourself is going away forever. And that's what's going to freak you out. But let me tell you, as somebody who's been through this exact process before, yeah, the emperor, your emperor self might go away or see, or go to sleep for a while, but he's not gone. You know, that you're not going to lose any of that, but let him take a nap. Let him take a nap and just take a chill pill and then let let you you know, let yourself get reacquainted with your feminine side, you know, try on the role of the Queen of Cups and see how that feels um and see where it takes you. I think it'll have a lot of good um repercussions for you, you know, making your home life more enjoyable, not just for you, but for anybody else you might live with, you know, this is going to help you, um, anybody interested in, you know, becoming more psychic, becoming more intuitive, becoming more spiritual, that's going to help you to go on that path. And then once you've lived that out, lived out the paradigm of the Queen of Cups enough and that you're getting a foothold on it, you're getting more comfortable with it, you're starting to see yourself as the Queen of Cups, getting reacquainted with your feminine side. And, you know, then you'll be able to bring the two parts of yourself back together and then they'll be coming into balance. But since we're so heavy on the masculine energy and the emperor energy, we're going to have to, you know, let this other energy, this feminine energy come in and get itself established before you come into perfect balance. So the balance is definitely on its way. The balance is coming. Don't be afraid that you're going to just completely become somebody else. It's just an experiment. It's like learning a new role, learning a new job. And then eventually everything comes back together because of course you don't want to be out of balance. You don't want to have your masculine energy or your feminine energy do like too dominant, right? You want things mostly balanced. I mean, as balanced as, as we can have them, right? And you want to be able to pick and choose, you know, today, um, what do I need to do? If you're going to deliver, if you're going to like a boardroom conference meeting, right, you want to be able to step into your emperor energy. But if you're going to, you know, your mother-in-law's for dinner, maybe you want to be more of the queen of cups, right? You want to be able to pick and choose. And that's what you will be able to do once you learn to step into your feminine energy a little bit more. Eventually you'll come into balance. So just keep that, uh, keep that on the horizon and don't worry that you're betraying your past self too much because you're just evolving yourself. You're just going to be becoming more of yourself and opening up more aspects of yourself. No, no part of yourself is going away unless it truly does not serve you. And you won't, even if it doesn't serve you anymore, you still won't lose that aspect of yourself until you've finally made your peace with letting it go. You know, no part of yourself goes anywhere until you're completely well and truly done with it until you set it down and say goodbye. Um, yeah, so... Oh, it's also cool that 13, this paradigm shift code over here is, is number 13 because that is the number of the goddess. So <laughs> that's where you're going, guys. You're going to be getting in touch with your inner goddess. And I think that's what I'm seeing for pile two here. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. You guys are coming out of whatever shitty situation you've been in. Okay, you've got five of wands here. Or, I'm sorry, this is the five of cups. And in this deck, the subtext is disappointment. Which, I mean, that's basically the perfect way to describe the five of cups. That is feeling like the world is gray, nothing you do... Uh, ever pans out or works. Nobody ever gives you a break. You can't succeed. You can't move on. You're just stuck in a gray 
wasteland. But so that's where you've been and that's what you're moving on from. So all of that is getting left behind, okay? And it's going to be shifting out really, really quickly because you've got the Eight of Wands here. Eight of Wands with swiftness. That is, the Eight of Wands is just everything happening right now. Bam, bam, bam. Complete change even overnight or even in a moment. If you've ever been sitting there having a day and then a phone call comes in and it changes your, your whole life entirely. I mean, sometimes it can change your life in the best way. Sometimes it changes your life in the worst possible way, depending on what the phone call is. But that's how fast the Eight of Wands can be a literal phone call or a text, just anything. And But for you guys, this is very, very obviously a good, very fast change because you're also coming into the Ten of Pentacles, which is wealth. There you go. <laughs> so... Your money problems are going to shift out really quickly. I mean, seriously, guys, with the Eight of Wands paired up with <laughs> the Ten of Pentacles, especially after this disappointment, you know, this this could this is the energy of somebody who has just walked out of an interview or, you know, just found out that they didn't get the job they wanted and so disappointed, right? So disappointed just sitting there or you just lost your job, you know, something, right? Something with your job, so disappointing. And then literally a phone call comes in and, hey, you got the job or, hey, here's this new job offer and it's your dream job. That fast things shift or some kind of miracle amount of money dropping into your bank account literally out of nowhere. Like, I, I can't think of a better card to go with the Ten of Pentacles than the Eight of Wands because it is so fast, so unexpected, abundance manifesting for you <laughs> and what's really cool about this is looking at the oracle cards we can see how this shift is happening for you we got trust your innocence look at her this is an adult who has remembered to not take life so seriously you know maybe that disappointment you went through that that gray period where everything was just lackluster and frustrating, you know, that you went, you chose to go through that period because that would teach you to look on the lighter side, to remember your inner child. You know, people like to talk about the inner child. <laughs> um, it was like you got pushed all the way into boredom and all the way into the doldrums that you learned to do something just for fun or that you learned to just, you know, go splash and puddles it's that kind of energy of just okay everything sucks so how can I make this better anyway you know there's no point in just sitting here being disappointed and being bored and being blah I could I could do something to change my situation I feel like that is what you guys uh a realization you either had recently or maybe you're going to have shortly after this video learning to trust your innocence and trust that there is joy out there in the world and that you just need to find it within yourself in order to um, receive it, trusting your innocence. Yeah. This reminds me of something else. Yeah, for some of you, this is definitely part of your, your spiritual journey where you have been, have been actively working on this. Have, have, you have been learning to curate your vibration and, you know, work on your frequency and surround yourself with things that make you feel good, you know, turning on good music just because it makes you feel good, even though everything in your life might be falling apart. Well, you may as well turn on some good music, you know, have a nice glass of wine and cook yourself a nice dinner just because it'll make you feel good. And that is, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's amazing that it's exactly what you should be doing and learning to explore using just your creativity and just your imagination and just your intuition, you know, not doing things by the book, just being free to explore. And you guys have been doing energy work on yourselves, whether you know it or not. And I know, you know, whenever people kind of have their awakening and then they, you know, want to learn to do energy work and people go, well, how do I, how do I do that? You know, <laughs> how do I learn to tune into energies and how do I, how can I shift energies around me? But the thing is, we all know how to do that intuitively and perfectly. It's, you know, 
turning on the perfect piece of music for the that'll lighten the mood that is doing energy work you know you don't need to be doing reiki you don't need to be using crystals or you know meditating or even if doing any visualizations i mean all of that is awesome and totally can work it's all just different modalities of doing energy work but literally everything you do in your normal life like serving eating a delicious meal you know cleaning your house to shift out the stagnant and dirty energy opening a window opening the curtains all of those things are some of the most profound the natural examples of doing energy work um, that can shift your entire day or week or month and everybody that you live with. So that's really cool. And also this color card here, this is about learning to, to see all of the colors in the world moving out of this disappointment. Whatever this disappointment was, guys, you know what that is. As soon as I said disappointment, you know what you've been disappointed about. But you've been shifting your perspective. You've been shifting your perception going, okay, so I lost my job or so I have to move or so I had to break up with that person or, you know, so the world sucks, right? Maybe you're having an existential crisis about the whole planet and you're like, the whole world just sucks. But now you're trusting your innocence and you're coming into a world that is full of color because you're kind of seeing the colors that are already there and you're allowing to see the fact that, you know, the sunset is beautiful. Even if the whole world's, world's going to shit, you can still watch the sunset and it is gorgeous, right? And this is learning to be grateful for all the little colorful things around you. The small, the things that might seem small and that maybe you always overlooked, you know, like the sunflower outside of your window or like that beautiful tree, you know, next to the bus stop. You know, you can take a moment and really stop and smell the roses and see how colorful life is around you. You know, it doesn't have to be the doldrums. It doesn't have to be disappointing and gray. All you need to do is open your eyes and see the light all around you. And that is what you guys have been doing. And because of that, you've done so much awesome energy work on yourselves that you are going to create this sudden, sudden shift in your physical environment and it's going to be super cool i i'm excited for you guys it, it it can be like rock your socks i think in a couple of months you guys are going to look back and be like holy crap i can't believe how my life has changed i can't believe uh you know i'm living where i am or have the friends that i do or just i can't believe how much freer and lighter i feel this is going to be like there's going to be a demarcation line in your life where afterwards you're going to look back and be like, wow, that was the bad time. I'm in the good time now. The bad time was over there and I can't believe I survived. And look how it just shift rapidly, you know. So watch out for, for full, new moons and full moons when you're what, uh, at least for me, these things always happen on full moons. I had, it was almost one year ago, actually, on the full moon in Pisces, <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding, like 10 different problems in my life result that had been a problem for years and years and years literally resolved themselves like that as if by magic on one day on the full moon so you know I'm not just getting excited about the cards I know these kind of paradigm shifts these kind of I'm not even paradigm shifts they're like life shifts really can happen and you guys have paved the way by doing all of the inner work so just all you got to do is wait for the right moment you'll know it when it hits and kick back and enjoy it so that's awesome guys <laughs> <laughs> Uranus is really helping you bring this through because Uranus is such a, a quick and such a like electric and just bizarre, right? A really strange, a really alien, a really iconoclastic and what's what I'm looking looking for? Like anachronistic energy. If <laughs> if there's a planet in our solar system that can shift something like that, I would say it's Uranus because his energy is just, I mean, think of as a planet, he's literally on his side spinning, you know, counter to all of the other planets, you know, he's doing his own thing. And <laughs> yeah, you know, you can, you can tune into his energy if you want uh, to feel how quickly things can shift because he is going to be helping you bring that through. So I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Paul Four, welcome to your reading. Oh, I'm sorry about this glare here. Let's see what I can do about this. Making more glare. Making more glare. 
Aha, there we go. Okay, you guys got the Ace of Worlds, which would be the Ace of Pentacles. The subtext here is success. Look at this. Ace of Worlds, the card is literally populated by planets and success. And this is coming later on with Compassion, Three of Wands, and the Star. A lot of cosmic energy, which is cool since we are tuning into Uranus here. And more than that, you guys are the portal keeper. And number 29 over here, you are the universe. I'm just, before I even get into this, I just want to show you all the cards. The portal keeper. The keeper of the gates. The watchers of the way. The guardians. The light workers. The star seeds. Yeah, that, that is cool, guys. The portal keeper. Think about what that means for you. You are the universe. This is a mass massive shift in your consciousness. This isn't just... This card didn't just come up to give you a metaphor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It didn't, it didn't come up just to give you a metaphor and say, oh yeah, you know, metaphorically, you're the, you are the universe. I know in spiritual circles, people always talk about how, you know, the law of one, all is one. I am you, you are me, you know, I am source, I am God, all of that. But most of the time we don't really, even if we kind of believe that on an intellectual level, we don't typically feel it. We don't understand that viscerally. We don't live that. This is a major shift in your guys' consciousness where you are going to be experiencing that as truth. And that comes in so many different ways. You know, this can be an ego death experience. This can be a soul braid experience. This can be feeling the channel of light all the way from source or beyond even and feeling it flow through you and feeling knowing that that energy is yours and that you have a right to it and that it is you and that you can channel it um, and be a literal conduit for source this is like this is big <laughs> so much celestial energy okay I'm so drawn to all of these different planets here. I feel like this is almost like the highest vibration of Pisces energy that I, I can imagine. You know, Pisces energy, the 12th house energy of, it can be so murky and foggy and convoluted and dark and oppressive, but at, in its highest vibration, it is all the other aspects of the Zodiac, you know, for you because we have all the different planets here. We have literally all all the planets in our solar system. And so I feel like you guys have been bringing together all different aspects of yourself, you know, different aspects of your personality, different aspects of your lives. And really, you've been retrieving your soul fragments, retrieving all those poor little splintered pieces of yourself. Um, and now you are coming into a place of wholeness and you know, you guys can look up how to do like a soul retrieval meditation. You know, you don't need to um, see any shamans or anything to do that. You can totally do it yourself just by sitting in a relaxed state and visualizing. And but I think you guys have already been doing that. But if you want to kind of solidify that, you can you can do any kind of intentional soul retrieval that resonates for you. And yeah, it's this success. It's because you're becoming so whole. That is what is allowing you to step into this greater part of your soul's purpose. You know, the star. You know, this is a card of healing. Also a card of transitioning into your purpose. Of finding your purpose. Of finding your footing. Getting on firm ground. And then being able to walk forward. And know what it is that you're here to do. And with the Three of Wands, Compassion. I mean, doesn't this look like the hands of a healer? This golden hand. This rose. 
if any of you have wondered about, you know, if you were ever a healer in a past life or if you could be a healer now, you know, whether that's with sound healing, Reiki, any kind of energy healing modality, even just being a spiritual leader, doing tarot readings, or, you know, working in traditional Western medicine or any kind of, like anything, anything where you're out to um, be of service to people in a healing capacity, this is really, really highlighted here. This is saying, you know, take that seriously. Don't just sit around wondering if you could do that or wondering if you ever did that before. This is, yes, yes, you are a healer. You are here to help and you have been healing yourself and healing all of your little lost soul fragments so that now, now that you're realizing that you are source consciousness walking around in a body, you are the universe, you are channeling a source, you are a piece of source, literally, you are all of it. Once you really experience that, that is when you can create portals for people so that they can transform themselves. Because of course, when you're healing people, you can't really do much directly for them all you know you you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink right that's how it works with a anything you know so you're you're here to help people heal themselves it's like if you see that somebody has some kind of problem and you feel like you can help them fix it or just give them some advice on how they can fix it themselves you will then be creating a portal for them to go through and then when they go through it that is when they heal themselves And so when I'm talking about, you know, being like making portals, you like, what do I mean by that? Right. <laughs> I mean, some of you, you might literally like, like deliberately be constructing energy portals. Some of you can, can do that. You know, this can be also reading the Akashic records. If you've ever had any interest in being an Akashic record reader. Um, yeah, that is, you know, you can go there, you can open up a portal and go there. And with the portal keeper, you guys in your, if you meditate, you have been going through portals when you're deep in meditative states and you just don't really remember. Some of you might remember. I know sometimes when I'm meditating, I see an actual portal open up and it always kind of does the wobble. It goes like this and it's all kind of wobbly and kind of purple and blue. And I see myself going through it, but I never remember what's on the other side. I, I only remember going up to the portal. But so if you don't have any experiences like that, this is in your dreams, you have been going through portals because you are the portal keeper. You are the master of the cosmos. You guys are, you know, astrally traveling. You are meeting with your guides, you know, your your guides, your ancestors, your galactic guides, you know, your angels. You're meeting with them in your sleep. It'd be and, and it's not even that they're here to help you. It's that you guys are working as a team. You know, you are not just this poor little soul on earth, um, who your guides need to help. It's no, you're a whole team and you are absolutely 100% their equal. And in some cases, it's more like you are their guide, right? You are guiding them because you are the one who is so brave and so courageous and so skilled and so resonant with this period on earth. You are the one who decided to be alive right now, right? You're the one who's here. You're the one who's doing it. So yeah, just, I don't know that, that just really, that seems like a little bit of a tangent, but I think it's important for you guys to know that, you know, you're not just some poor little lost soul. You are a very powerful cosmic being. And in your dream time, when you reunite with, you know, your soul family and all of your guides and whatever powers you that you believe in, you know, when you reunite with them, you are 100% their equal. You are not just here to be guided like a child. Okay. You are the portal keeper. You are the universe. Success, the star, and compassion. These cards are so awesome. So <laughs> I I don't even know what else to say. Like, where are you guys going with this, right? I uh, you're you this is just gonna keep evolving. This is just you can look back and realize how far you've come and how far you have or how much you've changed and how much you've grown. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is, you know, ace of worlds. This is the new beginning. It, it is your new beginning in a whole higher octave of, of frequency. You guys are just, it's like you guys are already fifth dimensional. 
I mean, obviously your higher selves are already, um, you know, living or anchored in these higher frequencies of vibration, but you guys are like leading the way for the rest of humanity to get to the fifth dimension, to get to fifth dimensional consciousness. Your guys' consciousness is already there. You're already vibing there and you're going to be opening the portal. You're going to be opening the portal to help people, um, raise their vibration. Um, I think I was just didn't quite clarify what I meant about <laughs> making portals for people. Um, you know, you can be literally making portals or, you know, a lot of the time when we're doing things like uh, making music, cooking dinner, you know, just talking to somebody. Whenever you're doing something with somebody that helps them really shift their perspective, like energetically, I think of that as passing through a portal. You know, you've opened up a window for them. So they could see through the window and they go, wow, I really want to be on the other side of the window. And then they hop through the window. That's what I mean about like making portals, right? So on some level, you guys are doing that all the time because you've done it for yourself. That's how you've got here. You've portaled yourself here and you're going to be portaling other people through to just so much more comfort and ease in their lives. And, you know, um, like intellectual and emotional strength and but that's just the beginning really you guys are here for a very spiritual purpose you are part of the ascension if we want to use that terminology and you are helping humanity evolve its collective consciousness because you are so connected into your higher selves and straight into source straight into source guys so I know this reading was pretty abstract and a little bit vague, but I think that's how it has to be because you guys are so, you guys are so abstract. Your consciousness is so abstract and that means you're so, like along with that, you, you are so individualized and so unique that, you know, for a general reading, I can only be so specific. And more to the point is you don't need anybody <laughs> to tell you anything. You already know this all already and you can fill in the gaps and you know, create your own picture of this because you know what I am trying to say or what I want. I'm what this reading is trying to activate within you. You know what that's about more than I do. So this reading was, I think Uranus brought all of this to your attention just to kind of trigger something inside of you. And the real purpose of this was just to flip that switch. And over the next few days, uh, things are going to start to click for you. So I think that's that's all I have to say for you guys. Thank you so much for existing and for doing your work. And just, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.